wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi Lecturers, teachers, academics of University Malaya, welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. This is our second brown bag session on flip learning sharing session with uh, today we have my name is Azza and today we have uh, two expert in the making shall I put it that way Dr. Fauzani and Mr. Jazri both of them are from PASUM which is our center for foundation studies in sciences of University of Malaya so as an introduction um, flip learning has been an initiative by University of Malaya in order to uh, modify the method of delivery of the content or subject content that we give to our students. So let me just um, brief uh, a little introduction on how flip learning is for those of us in the audience who may not yet be very clear flip learning to upper kind. So flip learning is when we flip okay, we flip the delivery instead of the student come to class with zero or we presume it's zero lah, we presume it's zero eh? they come to class and they 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 get the content the first time or first hand from the lecturers in class during the class time and then at the end of the one hour or two hour class or maybe three hour class even they go back to their rooms or their campus or their college or their houses and then they digest it more when they do the assignment or the homework. So the idea of having flip learning is we flip the table or we flip the order, we say. When we flip the order, we provide the content before class. It has to be accessible to the students and the students go through the content before they come to class. So in essence, the total time taken for the teaching and learning process may still be the same time. It's just that the order you, you, you put it, yeah? So when we provide the content in UM, we have Spectrum, perhaps in Spectrum, perhaps via WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp um, uh, apa, uh, platform with your students or however it is. So the content or the, the, the introduction and the learning is given before the actual class session with the lecturer and the students knowing um, the arrangement and then maybe there is some expected um, assignment or assessment or some task small task that is given to ensure that they went through the content and then ideally ideally the lecturer will be able to capture which part that the student didn't understand or maybe not fully understand yet and then when the class time comes is when the lecturer go through with the students drill on the part that the, that most of the students still requires learning in person with the lecturer so the class session be it one hour two hour or three hour session of class that is scheduled with the students are meant to be used for the more meaningful session the activities with the students and um, maybe uh, to to reinforce what they have learned before class so by that time we hope that the students have a better understanding maybe they have good questions to ask maybe they have tried something and they they just want to know more or the 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 the, the team or the uh, parts that they don't understand is is you know they know what they don't know otherwise when you ask in class okay this is our lecture okay habis lecture any questions and then i'm ready to go click 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 can so so hopefully hopefully when we do flip learning the session that we have in class is more two-way in 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 nature and uh becomes uh, more helpful for the student to understand the subject matter or the skills that they get all right so ladies and gentlemen um, that was a little bit of introduction of what flip learning is. I thought um, it's it would be nice if we re refresh ourselves of what flip learning actually means. I would like to introduce to you now our two speakers or expert in the making, if not expert already, uh, with us. 
Dr. Fauzani and Mr. Jazri. Okay. I'll introduce Dr. Fauzani. Dr. Fauzani Mohamad Saleh is a senior lecturer at the Chemistry Division, Center for Foundation Studies in Sciences at Pasum, University of Malaya. She has been teaching pre-university chemistry subjects such as atomic structure, general chemistry, period table, ionic equilibria, state of matters since 2015. She completed all her PhD degree from University of Malaya in 2014 and her area of expertise is in polymer composites. So Dr. Fauzani, thank you so much for joining us and for um, re being willing to share your experience with us. We have also with us Mr. Jazri Fazlin bin Jalaluddin. He's an education officer at the Mathematics Division, Center for Foundation Studies in Science. He has been teaching pre-university mathematics subjects such as algebra, calculus, vector, statistics, geometry, trigonometry, information technology since June 2005. Prior to that, he has completed his degree in Faculty of Science, Statistics, at University of Malaya in 2005 and completed his Masters of Applied Statistics in the Faculty of Computer Science and Mathematics at University Technology Mara in 2016. In 2018, he completed his postgraduate diploma in Education at University of Malaya. His area of research is Circular Statistics. So yes, bukan calang-calang eh, dua-dua ni. We have, thank you so much uh, Mr. Jess juga for joining us and um, hopefully to share your uh, experience and stories of doing flip learning. So, my first question to the panels would be, and I'm sure um, it would be the same question from all the audience that is joining us today. What actually inspired you to do your flip learning? Who would like to start? Maybe two to three minutes from each panel? Okay, uh, Dr. Azhar, let me start first. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you to our moderator today, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Nur Azhar uh, Hamzaid. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good afternoon. I am having Dr. Fauzani to freeze. Am I the only one? Let Dr. Fauzani froze. Fauzani, Dr. Okay, Dr. Fauzani, okay. would you like to try again? Okay, I'm sorry. Actually, I have a bad connection <laughs> here at Pasum. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, now yes. All right. Uh, so, first and foremost, uh, I would like to thank edX uh, for being inviting me to this uh, forum uh, entitled Flip Classroom 3 uh, Brown Bag Session. Okay, to answer the question uh, on what inspired me to flip my learning is actually come from our Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic and uh, International Prof. Yati. Okay, when Pasung being asked uh, to do the PBL and flip class, uh, our management team at Pasung took initiative to invite edX teams uh, for three days workshop uh, to give us uh, information and overall view about what is a flip classroom and also PBL um, uh, all about. Okay, uh, and uh, we are very lucky because we have uh, uh, ADEX uh, e-learning head of division, Dr. Zahiruddin uh, Fitri. Uh, 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 he actually uh, 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 give a talk uh, on uh, how uh, we want to, we, we need to do, uh, handle the flip class uh, okay during the three days workshop okay uh, actually after attending this uh, flip clue uh, flip classroom we just noticed that we do conduct part of what uh, they call as a flip classroom before this uh, I noticed lah, uh, okay um, okay Actually, uh, one more thing is our uh, uh, actually our former director, Prof Ibrahim Muhammad, also has a plan to do this flip classroom, meaning that change a bit our teaching method 
from a traditional method to the uh, student-centered uh, uh, method before uh, the management team uh, change. Okay, I think uh, and uh, uh, before, uh, before uh, we being asked to implement the flip classroom in Pasum. Okay, um, actually, uh, 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 for my experience, it's good uh, if we have a flip classroom because uh, it is a two ways communication between a uh, student and also the uh, teachers. Okay, uh, inside the classroom, but. Uh, in a bulky classroom, it's actually quite difficult uh, to do the uh, to uh, to implement this flip classroom. Okay, uh, um, um, okay. Uh, I uh, I think that's it for me. Okay. Okay. Thank uh, you for sharing, Mr. Fauzani. So, um, what about Mr. Jess? What did it inspire you to do flip learning with your class? Okay, thank you, Dr. Azhar. Uh, first, I want to thank ADEC for inviting me to this bounce back session. And also, thank you for ADEC as well because uh, because come to Pasu, maybe if I'm not mistaken, last three months to teach us, all academicians, how to flip our classroom. Okay, so we get uh, some new knowledge lah from ADEC. Okay, so when we, we, when we learn about flip classroom, I have something to think about flip classroom. I have I have thought about prior knowledge. I have thought about technology. I have thought about student independency. I have thought about student centered. But but what I thought most is the intellectual property. My intellectual property because uh, what inspired me is because I imagine myself as a singer, for example. Uh, entertainer uh, as a singer let's say you can only sing let's say as a beginner you can only sing uh, at the party maybe at an event where at the party or an event only that certain people can see you singing at that time but if you have an album or cd everyone can see you singing so for the flip classroom i imagine that uh, when i make a video for my class uh, it's not the whole 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 asasi can see my teaching but maybe the whole world can see my teaching lah uh, that inspired me lah that is such a nice inspiration mr jess you like <coughs> you 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 correctly likened us to singers artists artists yeah <laughs> performing right eh? so uh. i think i think that's very true uh, when we when we become lecturers or teachers <coughs> We are at the center of the stage, and you know our audience are the students. And you correctly you correctly mentioned that, or you rightly acknowledge that um, our performance is limited to the four walls. Whereas when we do recorded version of our teachings, it is accessible to whoever has access to the video and the recordings. Thank you so much for sharing that inspiration. I hope that's an inspiration for the rest of us too in the audience. I would like to ask a follow-up question to Dr. Pauzani. Uh, when, okay, we know that um, when we do flip learning, we have to prepare some material beforehand. So that can be, like Mr. Just mentioned, the recordings of your own teaching, or it can be from somewhere else, you know. So I want to ask uh, Dr. Pauzani, what tools, like to technologies that you use to organize materials and contents during your flip learning? So this is part of preparation that we need to do. What do you think, Dr. Fauzani? What works for you? Uh, you're still muted, Dr. Fauzani. Sorry. <laughs> okay, actually for chemistry division, uh, we do a uh, thing teaching, uh, meaning that uh, we have uh, our own uh, team uh, to conduct the uh, um, uh, lecture. And uh, we have a, a resource person. So the resource person will... Um, will prepare all the all the slide uh, and uh, upload all the slide uh, before uh, the student enter the lecture hall okay uh, then uh, so that uh, the student uh, 
will have opportunity to do the revision uh, by their own before they enter the class. Okay. Uh, uh, normally, uh, in chemistry, we use uh, add puzzle and also uh, quizzes uh, as uh, uh, one of uh, 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 as the tools uh, to help us uh, do a flip learning. Okay. When we enter the class, uh, normally we will. Uh, uh, we will uh, go through the up, up, uh, learning outcome first and uh, uh, ask the student uh, uh, which part they do not understand uh, or give some question uh, using uh, quizzes or uh, any uh, other tools that uh, will uh, 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 that we can know that they are uh, they are they are um, they are uh, 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 we can know the the bench uh, where uh, the uh, they uh, they already uh, and, uh, where uh, is it they already understand or not uh, about what uh, being uh, 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 what what is uh, we uh, uh, inside the uh, material that we provide uh, before they enter the uh, uh, class. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, so from there, uh, we can notice or we will get uh, some information. Uh, uh, and sometimes uh, they already uh, 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 they, they already know uh, what uh, they do not understand. And they will, uh, and uh, from there, we will discuss, okay, uh, which part that uh, they feel uh, a bit dif difficult. Okay, uh, so normally for chemistry, we have uh, any other tools uh, such as um, uh, drawing, uh, do, uh, drawing tools, okay, to help us to, uh, to, uh, 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 to help us uh, to uh, actually um, um, to explain uh, further uh, details uh, to our student. Okay, uh, okay, I think uh, uh, that's from me. Thank about you, thank the you. tools and technology used uh, in the okay, uh, so my uh, classroom. Yeah, so it's quizzes and add and puzzle, puzzle that you. Okay. Uh, yes. So um, edX is edX also offers training on add puzzle and quizzes. If if you like, or you can just Google or YouTube those. The resources are plentiful. And this is in order for you to pre for us to prepare the material before class. So so not just to okay go and watch my recorded of last semester mm -hmm. you know at least um we we, we have some uh, a little bit more um thoughtful design into what the material that we put in for the students to pre-learn before class okay so then it comes to now you imagine the students have gotten the material they have gone through the process of learning it before class and then uh, it it is time for us to know if the students um study sufficiently when they are at home when they are at at their colleges so maybe it's a question for mr jazzy how do you ensure or teachers us that the students study sufficiently when they are at home what do you, what did you do mr jess okay uh so okay in pasum Okay, for your information, I started to be a lecturer under new VC only for this semester. So I was asked by my boss to teach for five weeks. Okay, we have around 15 weeks. So uh, one lecturer teach five weeks, me teach five weeks, another lecturer teach for another five weeks. And our boss also give an, uh, an instruction for us out of five weeks that I teach, uh, one week must be at least one week must be a flip classroom. So meaning four weeks as I, I use a traditional method, only one week I use a flipped classroom. For the traditional method, as usual, uh, when I, I teach something, uh, I, 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 share, I share PowerPoint with them in the spectrum and I give an exercise and I give tutorial and I ask them to do the tutorial. Then if they know how to do the tutorial, I assume they read and they understand what I teach them. But if I don't know, maybe they don't quite really understand what I teach them. That is by using traditional method. But by using a flip classroom, uh, one week I have to use a flip classroom. What I did is uh, I made a video. I made a video uh, by using Ad Puzzle. Lah. I made a video using Ad Puzzle and 
inside a video, I put a few quizzes there. A, inside a video, I put a few quizzes. So from there, we can see whether student go through the video or not. Okay, then student can answer correctly all the questions or not. Okay, so so from there we can see whether students go through the video or not. But of course, uh, I think we should understand that some students do, don't have a, a high capacity of data plan. So instead of uh, doing a video and give a quiz to them in a spectrum, I also provide a PDF notes for them. Okay, I also provide PDF notes. So for them who don't have a, a data plan, uh, so they can see from a, a, what we call the PDF notes. Lah. So so the, the best thing about Flip Classroom is whatever they see in the, uh, whatever student do, we can monitor them. Okay, uh, that's all for me. Thank you, Mr. Jess. Yes, so it's very thoughtful of you to have the video that may have you know high bandwidth capacity that's required by the students and also the pdf notes for them for those of uh, students who might not have access to uh, good internet connections so thank you now that yeah. they have gone through the preparatory work that you have prepared you have somehow assessed if they number one did they actually look at the go through it and number two what's their level of understanding this is done all before class so now it's time for the students to come to class let's say it's monday eight o'clock in the morning my class is in monday eight o'clock in the morning um now is the time that you know we know that the, the a certain percentage of the students understood one part and maybe not the other I would like to pose this question to Dr. Fauzani. In order for you to run the class, how did you design the class activities to be student-centered to ensure that the flip learning goes effectively? Okay, uh, mm -hmm. thank you, Dr. Azam. Okay, normally uh, I will call uh, 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 volunteers to present uh, their works or any uh, problems that uh, we will uh, give in the class, okay? Uh, sometimes we will give before the class or sometimes uh, sometimes uh, we will give questions uh, uh, inside the uh, lecture hall, okay? Uh, at when uh, uh, the question being asked uh, before the, uh, the um, before they enter the class, they have they do have, they do have a, a time to prepare the uh, answer. So I will uh, ask uh, any one of them uh, to present or to uh, explain uh, and show us uh, their uh, answer. And from there, uh, uh, I will correct uh, uh, if there is a mistake. I will show or. Uh, uh, the mistakes to the audience, to the students, so, so that they or uh, they they notice uh, what's their problems actually. Sometimes they do not uh, they do not know uh, what's their problems. Okay, uh, and when uh, they are, uh, when uh, there is a sample, uh, 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 a sample of uh, answer uh, being shown to all of them, uh, then. Uh, uh, if there is a mistake, we will we we will correct the mistake in uh, in front of the class, and uh, actually from there we uh, we do a uh, uh, we do a, a student centered uh, learning approach. Uh, okay, um, because actually uh, the one that explain their answer uh, before they uh, uh, I correct them, they need to explain what they uh, understand about uh, the question. Uh, um, and uh, why uh, 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 the answer is like that, all right? Uh, 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 okay. Oh, uh, then uh, 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 that's how I ensure the, stu uh, uh, the student, uh, 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 sorry, oh, uh, then uh, I ensure uh, this uh, uh, flip classroom uh, become uh, effective, uh, okay? Because uh, uh, we both do... Uh, uh, communication uh, and uh, the communication actually actually come from from the student not from us we just uh, act as a, a, fa a facilitator to guide or to correct them uh, if uh, there is a mistake uh, in their answer something like that okay 
I think that is a very important uh, message there that is for the students as well as the lecturers that is it's okay for the students to make mistake in class during that session it is part of the learning process and we know our students they they, they may be a little bit guarded when you you know asking when we ask them to answer questions in class because they are afraid of making mistakes they, they takut salah takut salah ataupun tak nak tak nak jawab you know so it's good that uh, dr fauzadi you have um, encouraged the culture of of discussing making it as a discussion point rather than a testing point you know so thank you for that i would like to ask uh, mr jess how about you how did you ensure that your in class time is rich meaningful and helpful uh, your, your you. oh, okay. oops okay can you hear me okay okay how i want to make sure that our class is rich meaningful and helpful after my experience experience doing a flip classroom I'm not so sure whether my class is rich or is it meaningful, but I'm sure it is helpful to the student. Maybe helpful lah. I just share my experience. Then, then maybe I'm not the correct person to share this experience because so because. But I have an analogy for you uh, for for the for the whole. Uh, okay. Uh, let's say you want to get advice from a person. Let's say. Uh, let's say you want to know how to get a happy marriage or relationship last forever. So maybe the correct person you should ask is the person who may, maybe already married 30 years and happy. So that's the correct person you should ask. And actually another another optional person you can ask also the maybe the person who is divorced with their partner. But but they can also advise you. They can say that don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. It is also an advice for you. Okay. But I think I'm I may maybe the second one lah. Then but of of course you will not ask the single person lah because single person uh, don't have a partner. Then they cannot give an advice for you. So at least I can give advice for you based on my experience. So because my plan. It's not exactly what I want. What it happened to be? <laughs> this is this is what happened. Huh? Actually, what is my plan is this is the our my first time I'm doing a lecture and my first time doing a lecture. Also, after a few weeks, uh, the boss asked me to do a flip classroom instead of flip classroom. Okay, usually during a tutorial, I once I ask student to speak in front, maybe for five minutes. I ask them random lah. So I. I ask them to teach their friends. May, then I give marks to them lah. Maybe week this week student A. That uh, maybe next week student B. The next two weeks student C. So I want to share. I want them to share the conclusion what they learn. So to me, when they share something to the the rest of their class, which which consists of only twenty students, the rest of the class I think will be. I think uh, I think they since they are close to their friends, they don't afraid to ask stupid questions because the one who asked who, who teach in front if their friend as well. So sometimes they ask silly questions. So I think all students will be comfortable to ask questions and students who speak in front also feel comfortable because they uh, only only speak in front of 20 students. Okay, so I plan to do it in the lecture. So what happened if during lecture? Okay, let's say uh, I have lecture on Monday. I ask student to read uh, to go through a flip classroom. So during class on Thursday, they have an idea what they will learn. So during class, uh, so during class, then of course I notice when I ask how many of you already go through the video or read about it, maybe around half or less than half already read it. So not everybody read or go through the video. That's the first thing. I don't know lah. Maybe they quite lazy, or maybe because of the internet. I don't know the reason. And so what I did is, uh, I have to play the video during the class. Actually, I supposed to ask the question, but I have to play again the video. Then, uh, then as 
uh, as I said just now, by using at puzzle, after a few minutes, there are questions, they answer it together. Okay, what is the answer for this question? They will answer it together. After three minutes, they will answer the questions. So I have to play all the video. Then after I, I play all the video, so I ask any volunteer to come in front to to maybe to present what they learn from the video and what they learn from the PDF that they they read. OK, and I also give an optional whether you want to present using my in front or maybe you can come come front to me and ask me questions. Actually, at first I'm happy, maybe around 30, 30 students come in front. OK, one by one, maybe maybe two person come three, but none of them want to present to speak. None of them come to me simply to ask questions. Sir, I don't understand lah this one. Sir, I don't understand lah this one. So, so it seems that uh, my plan is not like, uh, it's not happened 100% lah. So this is what happened during flip classroom. So what I uh, what I want to say is, uh, I uh, my class is still helpful because whatever student don't understand what they read, and they don't understand from the video, they ask me personally during class. So, so I help the student to understand better. So during the class, instead of giving lecture during PowerPoint, what I did is just answering questions from the student. But nobody want to present, want to talk in front of 400 students. Lah. I don't know, maybe they are afraid, maybe they have stage, stage fright. Okay, maybe maybe because uh, 400 students is too crowd, then they nobody there to speak in front of 400 students. So my plan is not uh, not doing well lah. Okay, but at least is it helpful to me? Thank you for sharing that. At least at least 50 percent of the plan works. Yeah, so I think need, so. We yeah, we need to work on the the rest of the 50 percent that yeah. that may yeah. need some some work. So, so maybe I can throw in a suggestion over there. Instead of them presenting how to solve or the answer or how to teach, just let them, uh, let's say uh, student A, you have ensured that they understood. Student B comes in and answered the ask somewhat similar question. Just you pair them up. Okay, see over there, student B learn from student A. Yeah, maybe it's a good less, idea. Uh, so so yeah. the class will be noisy and uh, it will be quite chaotic because you have student A and B learning together, C and D and E learning together, F, G, H learning together, you know. So in all uh, lumps of students in place, so the class will be chaotic, but like flying a kite, always, you know, bring back the kite home and then you, you have some, so maybe um, just a suggestion for you yeah, perhaps yeah, yeah, next good, time. Good, yeah? good idea because I know some of my friends do another method. Maybe during the during the class during the lecture, what they did is they they use a padlet, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. So mm. using a padlet, they just student just type for whatever answer they want. Mm. Uh, then maybe maybe that that, that, that is a better version yeah. lah. Instead of yeah. ask them to speak, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe, because yeah. I I'm sure the students are able to teach their friends. It's just that fright or yeah. being uncomfortable or you know the fear of the unknown. So if yes. you put if you put them and and also a little suggestion for 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 us all is whatever you do, don't take it for the whole one hour. Maybe half an hour, and then even though they are not done yet, pull them back. Remind them that I'm I'm your teacher. I'm I'm the one in charge. But throw them again in that position for another fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, and then pull them back. So even if it's not done, I'm sure they will be able to make it done after class or outside. At least the rapport is there, the trend is there. And yeah. So good experience, good um, uh, sharing of what's happening in class. The last part of flip learning is for us lecturers to reflect. What actually went well? What actually requires more of my attention? And maybe I need to have another strategy for it. So perhaps this is a good time for us. Um, either Dr. Fauzani or Mr. Jezri would like to share any tips, any obvious challenges that you think uh, the audience would would um, uh, you know get some information, get some useful tips from you, some golden advice. Any of you wants to start with that? The reflection part. Every time we finish, 
Yeah. Ladies first or Dr. Masani yeah. ke saya? Bolehlah uh, Mr. Jess, alang-alang mikrofon dah oh, on. Saya, oh. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay uh, since my plan may be not 100% working well, maybe I, as you said, maybe 50% working. So uh, maybe we can update it. So I think what we can do is uh, maybe we can uh, we can collaborate with PTM. Maybe PTM uh, Pusat Teknologi Maklumat have to upgrade the Wi-Fi system. So uh, the whole students in UM have access to the video lah. Uh, so all of them have a, uh, don't have a limit for Wi-Fi. Then can watch video, and maybe one thing I can do is maybe I should give uh, maybe maybe marks or honorarium because usually or may, students will only do something if they know they will get marks. So if don't they don't get marks, maybe speaking in front, they they will not do. Okay, maybe maybe one one of the idea, or maybe I think uh, in order to do this uh, the flip classroom, I was thinking is uh, it's better for me to do in the small classroom. Small classroom means that when someone speak, they do do not need to use a mic. Maybe for the the lecture hall which have four hundred student, maybe student afraid. Yeah, because too many students and maybe maybe they 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 have to come in front to speak. Maybe for the class which consists of 80 students, they can speak from their where they sit lah. Okay, maybe I uh, next time if possible I can do a in the tutorial class ah, instead of doing in the lecture. And the last thing I I notice then maybe I can I can make it better is when I want to do next ah. Uh, flip classroom next time i will make sure i choose the topic then student already familiar with it uh, maybe the mistake that i made is uh, out of the five weeks we choose the topic then that, that student haven't learned in spm but they just they, the new topic they learn in asasi so it's totally new to them so no wonder when they read the the video so no, no, no. They watch the video or read read the PDF. They still don't understand. Then they uh, they go to meet me. Then uh, then they want the answer from me lah. Uh, what they don't understand. Okay. Then I think I will be a better teacher for a flip classroom. I think that's all. Thank you so much for that suggestion, uh, Mr. Jess. Yes. Topic selection or week. Which week do we want to do flip learning? Is also an important. Um, success factor, I might say, yeah, of um, having the students' uh, level of familiarity before we, you know, throw the task at them and you know ask them to be independent and mm. think a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a very good thought. Uh, Dr. Fauzadi, any suggestion from you? Um, actually, I'm agree with uh, Mr. Jess. Okay. Uh, Actually, for difficult topics, uh, when we do a flip learning, uh, student actually uh, facing a, a very difficulties to understand. Uh, even though they do a Google search uh, um, uh, from the uh, website, but uh, sometimes uh, they 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 uh, they might have a, a different version, meaning that uh, the information uh, sometimes is uh incorrect uh, or uh, um make the misleading with the the correct information okay uh, uh when uh when they they do not they don't have any um when they don't have any uh, prior knowledge on a certain topic uh, that uh, uh, we do uh, 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 when they don't have any uh, prior knowledge on certain topics that uh, they and they just learn uh, uh, in a uh, uh, passum all right uh, so uh, i think uh, this is our uh, this is the big challenge for us because uh, uh, I need to uh, explain, okay, I need to explain or uh, put them into the groups and discuss, okay, um, okay, uh, uh, okay, uh, so that uh, uh, they will understand uh, uh, 
about uh, the new topic uh, that uh, actually they need to cover okay uh, in a, in a, in in their syllabus all right uh, another challenge uh, in pasum actually uh, they don't have uh, a lot of time okay to do their own revisions okay My, uh, like uh, mr just said they don't have time to watch the vi video uh, before they enter the classroom sometimes i uh, i tanya uh, uh, i ask them have you watched uh, the video uh, before you enter this lecture hall um uh, maybe around uh, 70% of them uh, yang dah apa uh, go through the video and also the uh, the slide uh, before they enter the classroom. Uh, the good student, of course, they will do the exercises before uh, 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 apa? they come to the class, all right? And sometimes they ask me, okay, is there any question uh, they need to prepare, okay, uh, because they uh, they already know uh, I will do the discussion and uh, I, I will ask uh, 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 anyone in the class, uh, okay, to answer uh, the question and sometimes I uh, uh, I di uh, not directly give the answer, but I ask another uh, their friends to give uh, uh, their uh, opinion uh, uh, to that answer. All right. Um, another challenge uh, uh, to do this classroom is actually um, to do this uh, flat classroom. Actually, the uh, 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 bulky. Uh, I mean, uh, it's actually not very suitable for uh, like. Uh, 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 at Pasum because uh, uh, we have a bulk, uh, okay, uh, uh, because the number of the student is uh, is uh, uh, is not very effective uh, uh, compared to smaller classroom. Okay, because sometimes I feel not all of them uh, uh, took part in the in this flip classroom. Maybe uh, maybe about seventy percent uh, took part uh, in the classroom. Uh, this can be measured from the uh, quizzes or uh, uh, any of uh, uh, assi assignment that are uh, they need to uh, pass up. Uh, meaning they need to return back to uh, the lecturer. If not, they won't do the uh, this uh, uh, apa, uh, exercise or um uh any uh they do actually uh if uh uh sorry <laughs> actually um uh, sometimes uh, not all of them uh, uh, took part uh, in this uh, flip classroom uh, from my uh, uh opinion matter of so matter of large classroom that is uh a challenge for the in class <clears throat> in in class activity or in class part of the flip learning uh, session yeah <clears throat> whereby um, the activities are hard to be conducted if the number of students in the class is too large so um, there are ways around it actually um, um, that has uh, before this we have some training on how to handle large classroom activities to make it interactive in large classroom setting of course some you can use technology you can you can not use technology but it's a skill that we need to develop all of us has to have that that insight on how to handle large classroom i'm sure like uh, mr just mentioned 20 students in a class is perfect it's beautiful that you can just you know walk around in class and uh, ask them to work with each other but when it's a large classroom there are certain techniques that we can adopt in order for us to address each and every one of them and um, uh, one small tip that I can give is not not to give the the the, the self activity to be too long then they will get lost if they, if, if you give it 10 minutes then if they are lost they are lost for 10 minutes so like I said throw it to them some activity bring them back to you sometimes just three minutes three minutes start talking to the friend beside you after three minutes maybe they are still discussing maybe they are still hot in the discussion you know still trying to explain okay I'll stop you there let's get back to me let's see what we can have you know so so um, you know practice that power of throwing and pulling back throwing and pulling back among the students especially in the large classroom because they you I understand how 
difficult it is to have in class activity where especially when your your classroom maybe in an auditorium setting where you can't really walk up and around and along the chair you know so yes it takes practice but of of course definitely definitely it can be done so we've covered the preparation part we've covered the in class session and we've covered the reflection session uh, section of the flip learning so we hope um, adec hopes that um, this is a good example of flow of how to do a flip learning um, i would like to now open the floor for any question and answer from the audience if there's any and dr fauzani and mr jess will be happy to respond if not answer any questions maybe Maybe can I see some uh, uh, okay, show of hands? Oh, uh, Dr. Tang, yes, uh, Dr. Tang yes. here. Yes. Now, uh, our uh, current practice is to utilize the spectrum, right, to upload the teaching and learning material. So, for example, in my case, I always uploaded my lecture slide uh, before the lecture, maybe uh, beginning of the semester already for week one and the week 14. Now, can, you, can, can I consider this as a split? Uh, a split classroom because the student have an opportunity to read my material in advance, including the continuous assessment. Okay. Yeah. And to some courses uh, as I'm teaching economics, and it's quite for me, I think it's quite difficult for students just to learn from the video or something. We have I have to elaborate and discuss uh, during the lecture. This is what I observe. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let me give you one short answer for your first question. Is it enough to consider it as split learning if you put all the material because they have the opportunity to go through it? My short answer to that is no. But I will let the <laughs> I will let the short answer, simple short answer is no, not enough. Uh, so I'll let the um, two panels add on. To what what do you think about this? Actually, it's a very good questions. Uh, for me, I've, actually, before Adik, Adek go to our faculty, maybe last three months, I'm also thinking without Adek teaching us, actually, I'm also actually doing a flick classroom because I upload the things in the spectrum. <laughs> so when I upload like maybe lecture notes for five weeks, students can see the lecture notes for PowerPoints, maybe for the five weeks, what they will learn after for the next five weeks. So at first, I thought that is already a flip classroom and what adek teach is a flip classroom with video so is there any mistake from me <laughs> because at first i also th thought that is a flip classroom as well mm -hmm. okay uh what about dr fauzani do you think what do you think okay uh for me flip classroom uh is uh we we, we give uh, materials to the student before they enter the class but when the uh, the activity itself actually happen inside the classroom, okay, mm -hmm. meaning that we discuss, uh, 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 we discuss uh, uh, the learning process uh, and discussion process happen inside the classroom, inside the lecture room. Uh, when the student come to the, le the lecture hall, they uh, actually the one that um, uh, need to explain or. Uh, need to the uh, to explain uh, to their uh, actually actually uh, here uh, for big classroom we can uh, implement the uh, jigsaw maybe uh, we can put uh, apa, uh, jigsaw method so then we can um, divide the the lecture to the different uh, different different uh macam different topics and uh, uh from there uh, from the jigsaw method maybe uh, uh, the, uh the, the the discussion or uh uh, uh, uh jigsaw method is actually one of the activity that we can do inside the uh, lecture when we do a flip class uh, okay uh, uh, we give one to, uh, uh, topics uh, to the expert groups and also maybe to uh, to the apa tu um, uh, apa tu uh, and uh, and also uh, what gen not the general groups expert and also uh, 
Saya lupa term tu. Ya, yeah, uh, uh, there's expert group and then there's the working group. General, ah, uh, working group, uh, general group or working groups. Okay, then uh, actually uh, in flip classroom, the the learning process is actually actually happen uh, inside the class and uh, uh, student uh, actually play a role. Uh, okay, uh, 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 and uh, that's why they they say uh, when do a, when we do a flip class, actually uh, we technically handle the student centered learning something like that mm. that's what i i understand i understand about the flip classroom okay. maybe i would like to add a little bit uh, from uh, mr jesri uh, yes you convert the material into video that is to address the um uh, apa ni uh, keseronokan belajar instead of them learning from the from the slide you know dry slide they can click next 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 but when you explain but there's two more elements that is uh, when you do add puzzle if you re if you realize when you have questions in the add puzzle so you have them watching the video and at a certain part it will stop and then they have to answer question and then the video goes on and then the video stops and then they have to answer question so that is the assessment part so if we put the material online maybe it's slides maybe it's pdf words maybe it's video but you don't assess whether they went through it number one and whether they can answer questions related to it number two so then you don't have a you don't have any sense of whether they actually went through it at all and you don't know during class where to focus. Let's say the slide is a for a one hour class. Maybe you have a 20 slides, 20 uh, their slide decks, yeah? 20 slides. So maybe from the assessment that from the activity or the, the, the little quiz that you gave before class, you can actually go, um, uh, kind of uh, gauge Oh, I don't have to spend too much time in slide number one until number five. It's pretty clear everybody knows that but when it comes to slide number six seven eight nine most of them look very confused or their answers are really mixed up it's not everybody get a mix of answer so then you get a sense okay so in class i will focus more on six slide number six seven eight nine ten and then uh, when you look at the responses you can see again oh the conclusion is pretty clear so they they, they get they get they quite kind of get the, 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 the conclusion. But the part, the middle part is the one that they struggle the most. So in class, you can somehow design your learning session in class to focus on those difficult ones and just remind them and, and you know, uh, conclude together with them. Or maybe if 50% understand, 50% don't understand, you can make them pair, like you mentioned. Pair them up. The ones that don't understand, pair them with the ones that understand and they can, so this one can be done. So, but if you find that more than 50% of them do not understand a, a certain chunk of that lecture, of that day, then you know that, okay, in class, I'm going to spend 20 minutes of one, my one hour to, to really explain, maybe bring some props, maybe have better examples, maybe get more sessions with the students, you know, Anything you want to do in terms of designing the the learning experience with the students, maybe you wanna uh, make role playing, maybe you wanna have a tutorial or a short quiz on that matter that that you have identified that they are, they don't understand the most. So that's how flip learning effectively works: is when you kind of able to identify what is the area that needs more um, effort from you as a teacher or a lecturer in order for you to design the session to be better so that's one from me to cumulatively uh, the three of us kind of answer dr tang is that okay dr tang Alza? yes yes yani silakan okay just want to share maybe uh, some of the activities i can do based on spectrum mm -hmm. is like preparation before your class yeah mm -hmm. so for instance um i have this uh, subject about system approach about anatomy and all that so impossible for you to actually cover them right mm -hmm. so what i did uh, before the class i went to group in spectrum and auto create the group 
plus the subject that you want them to discuss. Mm. So once uh, you're in the class, because I think a student, they, they love to click. So they, they don't want to work with anyone else. So one way to do it is auto-create the group. And then in Spectrum, when uh, during class, you just open Spectrum and show these are the group that, mm -hmm. you know, and these are the sub, uh, topic that you'll be doing the discussion. And the best thing, not the best thing, um, to me, uh, we are trying to move away from recalling method, right? Where students learn and recall and, you know, that they're not learning. So I'm trying to make it more in-depth. So one of the things that I mentioned to them at the end of the presentation, um they have to work in groups and then come back and have a powerpoint uh it, either they do a uh, mind mapping or they do an analogy of that system mm -hmm. so from there then we understand uh and at least i understand what they understand and from that i work on that to actually uh uh improve not improve yeah to to strengthen their their knowledge so that's one thing that you can do without uh just preparation. And another thing I'll do in class is I use my role lab uh, mm -hmm. for mind mapping. So yeah, that will get catch the attention at first, you know, but yeah, you shouldn't be doing it for too long. Uh, so that they can actually see their names on the screen and, you know, uh, contributing uh, all these answers and the project. So that's another thing that you can do so that, uh, you know, we're moving away from recalling uh, you know, they just have to memorize, but they do not understand anything. So, yeah. Yes, just, uh, thank, you. thank you, Johannes. That's wonderful sharing. Um, maybe you can be our next panel of expert when we for the next brown bag session, eh, Johannes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not Umu? expert yet. Umu, let's take note. <laughs> Thank you, Yanis. Yes, yes, those are activities. I, I, I've known Yohannis for a very long time. So I know she's very passionate about teaching. Uh, maybe maybe next session, we can have more um, uh, exposure on the, the techniques that you use. That will be useful for us to practice in our own class um, without fear of, you know, of, of judgment. Because it's, it's just among our students, can? Mm. Uh, by the yes. way, Yohannis, uh, how many students in your class? Yeah? Uh, okay, I don't have hundreds, but uh, it's about 40 and all that. But the thing is that oh, when you identify the topic, let's say you have mathematics or whatever, so I'm sure there's so many formula or whatever that you want them to understand. So maybe you just break that uh, topic into a small, small, small topic, and then you prepare in advance. Because the thing is that if you were to ask them during class to get into a group, then it will be... Uh, it'll, time cons yeah, it'll take yeah. some time. But if you to prepare it before, so once you're in the class, yeah, you said, okay, this one. So let them actually uh, organize. So you give them five minutes to just get into groups. Uh, I don't know about Pasum, but here I encourage them to go outside because of COVID is still not. So I'm trying not to let them sit in the, the uh, closed air conditioned um, room for too long. So I said, go outside, you know, in a group, just make sure you come back. Uh, but at the same time, I'll go around and remind them about time, uh, you know, the timer, you know, like you should. And um, and the thing is that uh, for them to present, I asked them to use, uh, I created the MS Team group. And for them to actually submit their, their presentation in MS Team first. Because they are given another additional days for them to actually submit in, in Spectrum. But for presentation purpose, rather than they come in with a thumb drive and all this about time management. So mm -hmm. I asked them to, I, I create a link for the uh, and folder in MS Team. So they just put their their presentation there and then, yeah, then they present. So it just uh, give them a lot to do so that they won't be uh, stagnant, they won't be stale. No, it just, uh, yeah, to, just to keep them uh, Thank interested. Thank for, for, for our information, uh, Johannes is from Pusat Sukan. Um, so the students are budak budak sukan, loves to move around, and you know, so so it it you know it works. Life it works for them. <laughs> Maybe no, I don't know life perspective, tidak kan? But it jives with their nature, you know. So so um getting them to move around and uh, get in groups and without without people staring at them, you know, holding the microphone. So it works best. So that's where the the 
the are you getting to know your students part understanding them and um, maybe what works for one person may not work for another discipline but but it's it's, it's good to try is there's no right or wrong answer it's you know the world is your oyster you can try all the methods that we and, and if it works it it is a plus point if it doesn't work it's a reflection for us yeah and uh, sharing for other people um it's it my clock shows 128 i know we are in in you know in in a very good mood of discussing but in the interest of time i would like to um conclude the session uh, thank you so much if there's any other question from from the audience or from the panel i welcome you to join our next brown box session on the 14 16 and 18 of november so today is the third today is the third so it's 14 16 and 18 of november we'll have more panels um next week we are taking a break on flip learning we let you practice you know we let you practice first <laughs> and then come back let's come back again 14 is a monday 16 is a wednesday and 18 is a friday uh, same time same place microsoft teams um, we have our attendance and feedback form link for us all to to um, uh, key in right now before we end before you leave the room the virtual room and if you want to suggest any um, anyone you know who has been doing flip learning and want to share share with all of us you're more than welcome to write to us in ADEC at ADEC at um, Before we end, I would like to invite everyone to switch on your microphone, a microphone, blood camera, switch on your camera to have a last group photo together. Um, I would like to personally thank uh, Dr. Fauzani, Mr. Jazri, uh, Dr. Tang, Johannes for sharing uh, and on your, all your questions. I uh, will see us all again in two weeks' time. The first one will be on Monday. Come back again. You may have more questions. We don't mind having a full house. The more, the merrier. Mumu, are we ready to take image photo? Okay. Smile for the camera. Oh, Dr. Rini. Thank you, Dr. Rini, for joining.